Hudson, an American mark which was all the rage in the 40s and the 50s, and the peak of the manufacturer's achievement was this model, the Hudson Hornet. Its dynamic, stretched out form impresses even today. With many innovative details, the Detroit automaker was absolutely up to date. A generous wheelbase allowed for optimal tracking and smooth running. Much was made of the fact that the center of gravity was extremely low. For the Hornet's badge, the marketing people came up with the idea of using a stylized rocket. This was, after all, the 50s, a time when the Americans were beginning to be fascinated by space exploration. The decorative treatment of the rear end was, however, a throwback to the 40s, when American car makers were inspired by Art Deco. The side view is memorable with the low windows, but this is not exactly new. There were already streamlined models in the 30s, like the Chrysler Airflow. The front, the face of any automobile, is 100% 50s style. Although the Hudson Hornet is a mix of various different design schools, it nevertheless manages to have its own distinctive personality. When the Hudson Hornet was launched in 1951, the garage owner Marshall Teague entered his almost standard model in NASCAR races and enjoyed immediate success. The hitherto dominant Oldsmobile 88s began to look a bit old-fashioned. Hudson called their new self-supporting carrossery monobuilt, and this is what gives the car its low center of gravity. The interior is expressive of the era, opulent and luxuriously appointed. Lots of chrome was what is expected in the 50s, but the Hudson designers were successful in their use of pearlized shiny plastic too. The Hudson's heat exchanger was called weather control. Even in those days in the United States, a car radio was standard equipment, but it took a while to warm up. Enough time to lower some windows and let a light breeze in. As if time were standing still and after a short warm-up, we can hear the American Forces Network in surprisingly good quality. The Hornet was so roomy that even when it was standing still, you tended to just lounge in the automobile to hang out, relaxed at the wheel or in the back. Good for long journeys, although in comparison to the American highway cruisers, the boot capacity was only average. But far from average was the power plant. With its 145 horsepower from 4.5 liters displacement, this was the most powerful six-cylinder motor of its day. The low-slung engine was also part of the low center of gravity story. If you want to get the Hudson moving, there's no great mystery. Everything functions pretty much like today's automobiles. Although at the time in Europe, manual gear shifting was the order of the day, in the United States, from the beginning of the 50s, automatic drive had become widespread. The Hornet had a four-speed gearbox and does its job superbly well. Without any shudder or jerking, the changes occur smoothly. Something of a surprise in a 50-year-old car. Even by today's standards, the Hornet offers a comfortable, soft ride. Bumps in the road are hardly noticed. The long wheelbase is in this respect a big advantage. And the tracking is first class on the straights. And in the curves, well, in the curves, the tracking is first class on the straights. 
Seriously, the Hornet prefers a straight line from A to B. But in comparison to other American cars of its day, the Hornet was positioned in the sports limousine category. The powerful motor pushed 1.8 tons of automobile, 5.3 meters long, to a maximum speed of 160 kilometers an hour. But in spite of this enviable performance, the Mark was doomed. After a fusion with the Nash Company, the last Hudson left the assembly line in 1957, and there were further changes of ownership until Hudson came into the Chrysler fold. The Hornet had assisted braking and a butter-soft automatic drive, but the steering remained obstinately manual. The fact that this battleship can be held on course quite easily has a simple reason. Count along with me, one, two, three, four, five, six, a massive steering wheel with an unbelievably indirect translation of the commands. Sudden maneuvers are all but ruled out, but today there's no reason to drive such a car as it was driven then. Today it's just a relaxed cruise and the enjoyment of a rare and beautiful masterpiece of automobile craftsmanship. <laughs>